blessings before this wonderful message from my father in the lord late archbishop bensi idaosa i'd like to share information about anointedtube.com with you the number one christian video sharing website today anointedtube.com this is a powerful site believed to be the top most Christian video sharing website in the world today. It is ranked as one of the best video sharing website according to available data. It hosts videos of preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from all around the world. You can as well share our video on all social media platforms. The World Database of Christian Precious, positively touching and changing lives around the world. It is a great Christian video sharing website. The Lord bless you. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. message or Copeland's message or Benihin's message. Quickly the scripture followed me straight to Acts 11 where Peter opened his mouth and said God is no respecter of person but in any nation wherever he finds a faithful man or woman is accepted of him you are accepted of god you hear what i'm saying you can speak yourself out of this language of recession by believing that man is not your source god is your source i say god is your source the day you believe it it will begin to work for you 2335 our aircraft is 10 11 the one that is a little bigger than dc 10. we left about 30 passengers that we couldn't carry because the passengers was more than the capacity of the aircraft every aircraft full of every airport full of thousands of passengers up and down every airport new buildings coming up what are they using to do that 
wants a money. Why will it be that it's only you who serve God? Righteousness is not punishment. Say that. Try to say it. Try it again. I didn't hear you. Try it one more time. Did you say so? Do we have any doctor here? The sign of righteousness is not deprivation. Just because you are serving God, your car shouldn't look down. Poverty is a disgrace to God, not an honor. And if everyone in this world have a right to prosper, you are the one. Somebody say amen. I just wanted to say that to support the man of God's language. Talk yourself out of it. If everyone around you say, we are poor, you say, minus me. <laughs> I say, minus me. You are supposed to have the joy of the Lord as your strength every day. And every child of God, I tell you, that scripture rings bell in my ears every time before I let you sit down. The scripture that says, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Somebody say amen. amen. Yesterday is too old in the tomb to call back. Tomorrow is too, is too new in the womb to come to today. But today is your own. And this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad. Say amen. amen. Sit down if you like. was the one that wrote letter to poverty to resign. I was the chairman of Poor People's Incorporated. And the Lord said to me, the health is mine and the fullness thereof. So as the president of Poverty Association, I wrote and resigned. As the chairman of Unbelief Incorporated, I wrote and resigned. Everything that I found negative, I had to write and say, I quit in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, Dr. Benny Hinn is going to pray for the sick tonight. You may not be sick before I finish. <laughs> so if you keep your sickness, he will pray for you. But if you get healed while I'm preaching, he will not be angry. I know him. We are friends. Did you hear what I'm saying? If you postpone your healing till I finish preaching, you keep it. But if you start to walk from your wheelchair while I'm preaching, that's all right. He's not going to be angry. Did you hear what I'm saying? That's all. But this is your healing night. That's my job. This is your healing night. Did you hear what I'm... This is your healing night. Say it's my healing night. In every area of my life, I'm to be healed today in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 The Lord sent me here to preach a message I have only preached once. In 33 years. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 14. When I was younger than this, I preached everlasting gospel. I know when to start, I don't know when to stop. But now, if I tell you 35 minutes, I mean 35 minutes. Matthew. 14. The scripture I'm about to read tonight, I've preached around it for three decades. And last night, the Lord awakened me. 
and said to me, you missed two points in the scripture. And the two points, I'm showing it to you now. I woke up by 20 minutes to 3 a.m. and wrote what God told me to say to you tonight. Verse 22. Straight away, Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him on onto the other side onto the other side while he sent the multitudes away say with me lord don't send me away. Don't send me away. Try it one more time. Lord, don't send me away. I didn't hear you. Lord, don't send me away. The same Jesus that said, Him that cometh to me, I will no wise cast out, sent the multitude away. And constrained, constrained, forced the disciples to separate themselves from the multitude. He said, disciples, we are going to have three units of people now. You will go to the other side. I will go to the mountain. The multitude will go away. Why did he send the multitude away? Multitude only come for bread and fish. Multitude don't pay tight. They give offering. Multitude don't stay with a man of God when there is fire. Multitude don't defend their pastor when people speak against him. If you are one of the multitude in the church, when liars come and say, your pastor is an adulterer, you say, I know. Or when you are a disciple, you say no. He's a man of God. Multitude don't wait at where there is heat. Multitude are not concerned whether the church pay the bill or not. No. Multitude come first. Come last and go first. Multitude don't clean the altar. Multitude do not arrange the flowers. Multitude do not have to pack the car. Multitude don't wait on the sick. Multitude are not concerned whether the church is growing or not. They come to look for a miracle, and when they get it, they go. Disciples! Disciples! Come across here. Hey, hey! Prosomoyeke, Echeria! Disciples! Tarry with God. Disciples! Fast and pray. Disciples! Disciples give offering. Disciples vow. Disciples watch the church. Disciples usher. Disciples help the sick. Disciples visit the weak. Disciples lift the fallen. Disciples are strong when everybody is weak. Change from multitude to disciples. Disciples take instruction. Multitude take suggestion. Jesus sent the multitude away. Why? Multitude do not withstand storm. 
What you did is hallelujah. Mm, hallelujah. Oh, yeah, yeah, hallelujah. Oh, yeah. When you pray for the blind and they don't see, multitude murmur. Disciples cry. God, why not? When the rent is due, when life bill is ready for the church, multitude don't find out what it costs to run the ministry. Disciples do. Multitude are not concerned whether the church is growing or falling down. But disciples do. And Jesus sent the multitudes away and constrain the disciples. Cabrodo. <laughs> constrain. He forced them to get into the sheep. But multitude, bye-bye. The bread has finished. You can go now. But disciples, you are going to the other side. There's a job to be done at the other side. The bound is there to be loose. The weak is there to be made strong. The sick is there to be healed. Multitude, bye-bye. Disciples, go ahead. Say, I'm going ahead. I didn't hear you. <laughs> Try one more time. I'm going ahead. Say, I'm going ahead. Disciples are not offended. Multitude are offended. The pastor preached a, a message that the multitude don't like. They take their bag and go. The disciples wait behind to say, why? Disciples ask, what can I do? Multitude say, I've done enough. Disciples say, what do we need? Multitude say, what have you done with the one I gave before? Who are you in the church? A disciple or a multitude? If you are a multitude, you will soon go. But if you are a disciple, you are crossing over. Don't be one of the multitudes. Be a disciple. Constrain them to get into the ship. Why did he constrain them? They were tired. They were weak. But Jesus said, the job is not finished. We will continue. Many people have different reasons of coming to a church like this. Either to be healed or to see those who are to be healed. And there are few that come to say, God, my father prayed for revival. My mother prayed for revival. At last, it has happened. I will stay with God. Somebody say amen for me. He constrained the disciples to get into a ship. And to go before him onto the other side. Why he sent the multitude away. So I said, God, why did you send the multitude away? He said, when the wind of life comes, multitude don't stand. Find out who your disciples are. And force them to follow you. Even when they say, I'm tired, say, we are going. When they say, I'm weak, say, the Lord is your strength. Don't give disciples suggestions. Give them instruction. If God asked you, my son, Benny Hinn, do you want to preach? He would have said no. He 
instructed you, come. Even when you say, I don't know what to say, he said, I put a word in your mouth. God is looking for disciples because he's tired of multitude. Multitude can go from one church to the other. Disciples stay to build a church. Multitude go when the church is in trouble. Disciples stay to solve the problem. Are you with me tonight? He constrained them. Aha, I like that. I like that. He constrained them. He compelled them. Go to the other side. The next verse said, And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into the mountain apart to pray. What a place to be. And listen to me, Dr. Ben Hinn. God cannot send you to cross the sea and he go to the valley. You will soon get what I'm talking about. When God is going to send you to cross the sea with wind, he, God, is going to climb up so he can see you when the wind is blowing. <laughs> if God asks you to go up, he doesn't go down. He doesn't say, Benny, are you, are you going? Where are you now? Have you started going? How is the trip? Are you all right? No. Everybody say no. no. Say no. no. When God sends you to stormy sea, he climbs to a higher ground. doesn't go down to send you up. If God sends you up, he climbs higher. So if the enemy wants to hit your head, he, the rebuker of your devourer, we hit him from the top. Somebody say hallelujah. He went to the mountain because God never gives assignment without assistance. God never gives a vision without provision. God never puts something in your heart without putting something in your hand. Set your hand and say amen. amen. Grab it and say amen. amen. For every dream you've ever dreamed, for every vision God has ever shown you, He's going to put something big in your hand to do what he asks you to do. May I hear you say amen? amen. Are you dreaming big dream? Are you seeing big vision? The government of Washington is not in charge. The government of God is in charge. Somebody say hallelujah. I said somebody say hallelujah. Washington government cannot supply all your needs. They can give you food stamps. They can give you welfare. But they never teach you warfare. God, who called you, shall not fail you nor forsake you. Let me hear big amen. He said, faithful is he that call it. For he shall do it. Can somebody say big amen? He went to the mountain to pray. But the sheep was now in the midst of the sea. That's my message tonight. Your vision and you 
at Midway. You and your calling at mid sea. The devil never attacks those who have died already. The pride never accuses a preacher who is doing nothing. Ben he stand up. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. Come along. Come along. Hold my hand. Watch. Do what I do. Turn around. I love it. Ben he stand up. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. Come along. Come along. Hold my hand. Watch. Do what I do. Turn around. I love it. Do we have problem? Do we have trouble? crisis? No. Stand here, Benny. First here. Come along. <laughs> Why? We are going in different directions. The devil never troubled the people going the same direction with him. you are walking against him. I said, do you hear me? Do you hear me? Are you hearing me? Don't walk hand in hand with the devil. The day I will hear that this church have no trouble, I'm going to ask God to give you double. <laughs> because if they fought Christ, they will fight you. Yeah. But thank God. Say thank God. Yeah. The weapons of our warfare yeah. are mighty. Yeah. Through pulling down yeah. of the strongholds yeah. of the enemy. And I want you to open your ear, Benny, and listen. Every hand stretched against you from today shall paralyze. That's the word of God. Don't run from trouble. Beat the devil. And everybody say hallelujah. hallelujah. I believe we cannot be winners when we don't fight. How will you say I'm more than conquerors when you conquer nothing? How will you say I can do all things when you are doing nothing? You love the story. Shadrach, yeah. Meshach, yes. Abed Negro, yes.
Oh, you don't want the experience. I have passed through fire many times. But look at me. By the grace of God. Somebody say hallelujah. I am not afraid of trouble. Because God always give me double for my trouble. <laughs> Hallelujah! No obstacles, no miracles. No obstacles, no miracles. If you want miracles, pray for obstacles. If you want triumph, look for trials. How many of you are listening to what I'm saying? The church has been jelly, 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 jelly. Where are you going? I'm going to Orlando Christian Center to do what? To fall. That's not why we call you here. He does not have the ministry of falling people. He has the ministry of lifting people up. And don't fall until you get your miracle. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God raise him to lift you up. Stand fast against every onslaught of the enemy. Midway, say that everybody. Midway. That's where the devil attacks. He doesn't attack somebody with five members in the church. What is he going to fight him for? For what? He doesn't fight those who have retired. What's he doing fighting for? He's useless. But midway, say midway, yeah. when the ministry have reached a peak and signs and wonders are taking place, that's the time the press is going to say, how did it happen? Who are you? But thank God, Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the press. Can somebody say hallelujah? Midway! Midway! Midway and mid sea is a place of decision of your vision. Mid sea. It's when you can prove whether God called you or not. Meet C. When you are doing nothing for God, the devil doesn't touch you. But when you are doing something for the kingdom, he provokes him. And he never does it until he knows you are meet C. In the middle of the sea, according to John's experience, John said, when they were gone halfway, and John said, between 25 and 30 furlongs, then the wind came. Mark said, as they went ahead in the mid sea, the wind came. But Matthew said, Matthew said, and, but the sheep was now in the midst of the sea, tossed. Why did the devil not shake the sheep when it was anchored? He knew that nobody would fall out. Why will he not toss the sheep when it has reached the other side? Because nobody will die. It's the midway. That your faith and vision is tried. Why? Five reasons why your faith, your business, your ministry is tested mid sea. Five reasons. Reason number one Are you ready for this? To give you 
distraction. The first reason why the devil come mid sea is to give you distraction. So you will lose contact from God and begin to look at the wind. Oh! Hey! Man! I'm finished! God never finishes he that I've just started. If the devil can distract you, he can direct you. If the devil can distract you, he can direct you. And he's looking for who to give direction. Don't take your eyes from God who called you. Somebody say amen. amen. Second reason why the devil tempts you mid sea for you to lose sight of what he called you to do. Once you can forget that you were going to the other side, you don't mind when you are turning around in one circle. And if the devil can succeed to let you be turning around, you speak of poverty instead of prosperity. You talk of recession instead of reservation. To talk of healing instead of sickness. To confess victory instead of defeat. When you are no more singing blessed assurance, but singing blessed insurance. You are no more singing. We are more than conqueror. But you are singing soon and very soon. You fly away. <laughs> when you are singing, I fly away. When the choir is singing, fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. When the choir forget that Jesus says, your belly shall flow rivers of living water and they are writing application to fill the little glass i believe this message is blessing you please visit and share videos on anointedtube.com the world database of christian preachers to help us reach 100 million people the message continues after this video about anointed you. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures, click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Thank you.
it's not enough for husband and wife to have their back. Talk less of taking care of the children. The devil will say, yeah. God will fill your cup. How many people can you feed with a cup? How many thirsty hearts can you quench with your cup? But when God opens your eyes, then you can say out of my belly, say out of my belly, shall flow, flow rivers, rivers of living waters springing up to everlasting life. Say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. When the church begins to sing, this little light of mine, instead of remembering that she's the light of the world, the devil makes the church lose sight. So those songs are good when you are not making the enemy your footstool. But we whom Jesus told, occupy till I come, we don't fly away. <laughs> are you hearing what I'm saying? Jesus didn't say, behold, you come quickly. He said, behold, I come quickly. Why do you want to go so soon when the Lord is coming quickly? You may miss your flight on the way. He may be coming while you are going. And who are you going to miss then when Jesus is coming here? Do you still want to fly away? I said, do you still want to fly away? No. Occupy till I come. Reason number three. Why the devil try your faith at mystery? Amid sea. For you to turn your back against God. Jesus said, Go forward. And he's on the mountain watching if you are going. When the devil succeed to tell you you are not in the right place, you miss God. So on Sunday morning, you are in Orlando Christian Center. In the evening, you are with Maurice Cerullo. And on Wednesday, you are looking for Jimmy Swaggart. If the devil can succeed not to give you a base, he can succeed to make you fall to every wind. Stand fast in the liberty where with Christ have made you free. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Reason number four. Why the devil tempts you at mid sea. So that you. Will miss God. When your purpose. Is lost. Your dream. Is lost. How good and gracious our God is. The reason I pray for this man in America every day is because while some champions are dying, God is raising a new champion. Can you say hallelujah? hallelujah. He has never left himself in vacuum from creation. Never, never, never. And this is your time to display the glory and the power of our God. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. What is happening today here is for the world to know God has not lost the battle. He's in charge of the program. Say amen somebody. Reason number five why the devil Tempt you at mid sea is for you to doubt your calling. The 
Once you doubt your calling, you withdraw from it. The day you are no more sure, you are born again. You can smoke, you can drink, you can commit adultery, you can commit fornication. Why? I'm not even sure I'm saved. Worldly people are doing it and they are okay. Why not me do it? Made C trial. Why are these five things like that? The devil wants to give you a choice to make. When you are at the edge of the sea, your ship cannot sink. When you are at the end of the water, the boat cannot sink. Mid sea is a place of decision. To go back or to go forward. Only you can choose to go forward. Why should we not go back? Let me give you an example. This pulpit is in the center of this altar. The length of this loudspeaker from here to here is the same length from here to here. If you are in the middle of this pulpit and the devil said, go back, measure it first. Because if he's going to take the same energy to go back, why not you die while you are moving forward? And to go back. While I'm going ahead than to die while I'm going back. Somebody say hallelujah. I know too much now. I can't backslide because I had nothing when I came to God. I can only front slide. It's time to go forward. If everyone around you say God is dead, say try mine. My God is alive. Say my God is alive. He's not dead. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. is a place of choice. Choose Jesus and you never die. Choose Jesus and your sheep will never sink. Choose Jesus your song will change. Choose Jesus your life will have a turn around. here and there. In the fourth watch, I like this. The easiest time to die, according to doctors, is between 3 and 4 a.m. <laughs> Brother, if you want to die, that's the time you don't need injection. You die. You die quicker, you die smoother at 3 a.m. But thank God, at the worst time, is the time that Jesus comes. 
When your boat is about to capsize, in your darkest hours, because he is the light of the world, he appears when no brother, no sister, no husband, no wife, no father, no relation, no tithe, no offering, whatever you are facing today, Jesus is about to come to you. He's not far away. In the fourth watch of the night, somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Aren't you glad that there's no darkness that his eyes cannot pass through? Aren't you glad that you are not too down for him not to lift up? Aren't you glad that you are not too weak for him not to make strong? Aren't you glad that you are not too poor for God not to bless? At the fourth watch of the night, when your friends turn their back, those who used to hug you now distance themselves. Jesus arrives. I said, Jesus arrives. I said, Your Jesus will arrive. Stop complaining and start testifying. Stop murmuring and start meditating. Stop nodding your head. And start to shake it. The Lord is on my side. The Lord is on my side. The Lord is on my side. Say it loud. Everybody say it loud. The Lord is on my side. And if God be for you, no man shall be against you. At the fourth watch. Mm. Of the night, Jesus went walking on the sea. Brother, no sea is too troublesome for God not to put his leg on the head. can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Thank you.
you can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the homepage and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Idausa is my father. My first encounter with uh, Archbishop Idausa, he was doing a big crusade uh, in the center of Accra, which is called Circle. He said, if your faith say yes, God cannot say no. Idausa is a man that believe with God, all things are possible. He had an unwavering faith. He had an unshaking faith. He had an unbreaking faith. He had faith in God. He saw God as he's talking to a faithful father. He saw God like his son will see a father who he trusts that is faithful. Whatever I ask my daddy to do, he will do it. That was Idausa's level of faith, beyond mass uh, explanation. He had faith. Spiritual a person, yet he was so human in nature. A man who reached out to everyone, the high, and the law in society. A man who rubs shoulders with presidents and the highest of dignitaries you can think of in society. I feel very blessed because the Lord has called me to preach the word of God in Africa and particularly in Nigeria. Um, I've been here with my husband 40 years now. It, it's a blessing. And it's particularly been a blessing to work with Papa Idahosa and Mama Idahosa. When you talk about legacy, 
I remember traveling with Archbishop Ibarosa to Kaduna for the consecration of Bishop Oyudepo. I think it's Faith Liberation Chapel. I remember it as if it is today. And uh, Archbishop said, we are going. And when we got to Benin Airport, uh, Okada, uh, that's chief, Igbenidion had given him an aircraft. So we flew from Benin City Airport to Kaduna. And I carried, and it was there he told in, in the preach, he said, this is my son. At the point, at that time, I didn't really know Bishop Edipo. This must have been early in the 80s or something. And then many, a couple of weeks after, Bishop Edipo came to Church of God Mission Sunday evening service. And I remember the first message he preached, it was on the prodigal son. The man brought me out from the dungeon. Papa Idahosa was... He was a man full of energy and vision. Uh, he, he, he was always getting, uh, moving on from one project to another. And often when he started a new project, we whites, we Oibos would say, why is he doing that? We couldn't see the vision at all. We thought, hmm, this is very funny. But then sometime later we would realize, Yes, okay, I see why he's done that now. And I was a Muslim that I gave my life to Christ. In Ghana, there was this kind of freedom of worship. There were a lot of Muslims. And among those people that were the grace of God, I gave my life to Christ. And I wanted to go to Bible school when I felt the call of God upon my life. And unfortunately for me, at that particular time, with the Assemblies of God Ghana, there was no space for women to go to Bible school. So my pastor called me and said, he wants me to go to Nigeria and meet with Indahosa because there is a room in that particular ministry for women. And I traveled to Nigeria by the grace of God. On getting there, I met with the Archbishop, my first time of meeting the Archbishop Indahosa of Church of God Mission International. What an awesome privilege it was to see this man of faith and boldness. I will never forget the Onicha Crusade. At that time, the head of state in Nigeria had passed the law that nobody should do open air crusades. And Archbishop said he went to pray and said, God, and God, what they are saying, and God asked him, what do you want? He said, I want to do crusade. God said, go ahead and do your crusade. So he sent us, I was part of the uh, advanced team to go and paste posters all over Odicha and we went to put posters all over Odicha and the first day of the crusade a truck load of soldiers came. The man of faith, the man of prayer, the man of courage, the man of peace. And Archbishop mounted the platform and, and the soldiers came with their guns. When Archbishop started preaching they all put their guns down and he made the altar call, they all raised their hands to receive Jesus as Lord and personal Savior. And we stood there and the whole crusade was an eye-opener for us. And right there, I decided I needed to go and know more from this man. Fortunately, he was offering scholarship for people who want to attend Bible school in Benin, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute. And so, that particular year, I uh, requested, I wrote, and fortunately, I was invited to come. So uh, we went to Nigeria to begin. Uh, my class, actually, I went there in 79. My class started in 1980, and uh, we went through the Bible training and it was powerful. We were all charged up. He started uh, the Word of Faith schools. He started the Christian Hospital, Faith Mediplex. He started Benson Idahosa University, all those. And well, he's, he's a man we can't, we can't forget. He was a great example to us and I thank God. It's particularly good for us, whites, British, because in Britain, 
Uh, people are rather skeptical these days. You'll not find many people who are really born again Christians. Um, people of faith are few in Britain, but if we can come here and our faith can be uh, increased, can be inspired, particularly by the things that Papa did, we are blessed. Let me share this. And I think for those who were around in Church of God Mission at that time, we traveled to Washington for Jesus. John Geminis went to Baltimore, flew to New York, and then flew to Lagos on Nigeria with 11 hours. And then we took Okada from Okada Air from Lagos to Benin City. It was bad weather. Brother, it was one turbulence I, I told God, as long as I'm alive, never let me face anything like this again in my travel. Actually, Dausa and the wife Margaret were in the first class, which is only divided by a curtain because it's a 90 seater plane. And we took off from Lagos to Benin. It was bad weather, raining cats and dogs. We rented a storm. There were Filipino pilots. And then they said that he has lost contact. The pilot said, listen, he has lost contact with Lagos. And so he doesn't know where he is. That is ridiculous. You are supposed to be taking us to Benin. So if you, the pilot, has lost contact and you don't know where you are and it's raining cats and dogs, what do you want us to do? And when I looked through the hood, brother, I was sitting at the edge of my seat like this. I was shaking in my boots. I'd never been scared like that. I thought I was, I, it, it was a life and death situation. The plane would move, dive, turn left, turn right. When I looked through the curtain, I was looking at the reaction of the Abishoy Dausa. We said, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And then one time he stood up in the aircraft. He lifted his hand. I will never forget. He said, God, this is what he said. God, you called me and you didn't say I would die in a plane crash. My mission is not finished. My assignment is not over. We call the enemy to order and command the devil to back off. Now you pilot, you better find out where you are and take us to our destination in the name of Jesus. And he sat down, five minutes and the pilot said, he has made contact with Port Harcourt. Listen to this. We are supposed to be doing 30 minutes from Lagos to Benin. And the pilot, we, we landed in Port Harcourt. So we, were the, we have lost our way. We have ended up in the sea. I will never forget. We landed in Lagos. It was still raining. That is where the testimony is. Mama, I was there. You can ask her. I told Papa, can I please go for bus? Because I was afraid. Can we get a bus so we go to Benin? He said, no. James, you don't travel like I do. I must conquer the devil today in the air. I said, what is this? <laughs> I was scared. I said, Papa, you want us to die? He said, James, if I don't conquer the devil, I will not be able to travel by air. Okada gave us his gold-plated aircraft. He called him. The plane rolled out from the hangar and we went by air to Benin. And that Sunday evening, he made me go to church and give a testimony. He said, Ghana boy. He calls me Ghana boy. I came and said, give them your testimony. You coward. <laughs> Another powerful miracle was when the witches in the whole world decided to come and have a meeting in Benin City. And Archbishop said, not when he's here. There won't be any such meeting. The chief priest then was summoned. His name, Chief Ebohon, because he was a representative of the witches then. And he said, the meeting, nobody, not even God could stop the witches from meeting. Then daddy said, or papa said, Yes, God will not waste his time to stop you because I'm here to stop you. God has put me here to stop you. And guess what? That meeting never took place in Benin City. When you are with him one on one, you will feel an aura that defies definition. You know, it's as if you are in the presence of God, of a deity, of something that is beyond where you are. You know, 
uh, he never celebrated mediocrity. He never took no for an answer. He dared to go where nobody wants to go or everybody feared to go. He was a man that believed in venturing where others fear to venture. He was a trailblazer. I remember those days, for example, this television ministry that's becoming anything today. He does have started it in 1974-75. I'm honored to have been one of his sons. And uh, by the grace of God, I think that um, that sign wonder anointing and his boldness. I was I did a meeting for Dr. Maurice Serrillo in 2010. And just before I spoke in his world conference, they said there, uh, oh, miracles don't happen in America because they have a lot of doctors. It happens in the third world. Well, when I took the microphone, I just shared my testimony. 23 cripples gave me their sticks and began to walk. Um, that kind of boldness to decree and declare, I took it from the late Archbishop. I believe in the transference of spirits, and I believe strongly, like God told Moses, I will take off the spirit that is upon you, and I will put it upon the 70. I'm one of the people who took off that spirit of signs and wonders from the Archbishop. Making a movie of the Archbishop will really, really help the next generation. Because the young preachers and the young ministers that are coming up have no clue of who he was. It, I mean, he will still be preaching and cripples will start walking. Um, that was an awesome man of faith. I remember whilst we were in school, he went to visit and it was shown on TV. Um, he went to visit Kenneth Copeland. And when he got there, they, he was supposed to have gone the previous day, but he arrived late. So they announced, when they announced that the Archbishop in Dahosa has arrived, six cripples got out of their wheelchairs. That is how anointed uh, Papa was. We must keep his legacy alive. Idahosa is dead to some people, but to us, to me, Idahosa lives. Hello, I am Bishop Margaret Benson Idahosa, the wife of the late Archbishop Benson Idahosa that did wonders while he was on earth here. Early in the morning when I rise, I will lift up my eyes. Now let me let you know how I got to meet him. You know, in those early years, he used to ride his bicycle with some trucks going from street to street, and one of it was my street. And every time he comes, we call him pastor. Pastor, he was young then, about 21 or 22. He was very, very young, but he didn't mind. He was not ashamed of the gospel because he knew that that was the power of God in his life. And one of these days he was riding past and people were crying in my house. <laughs> and he just stopped, brought his, brought his uh, small little Bible out and came in, just uh, uh, with it through the crowd. And he came and I said, Pastor, please, today is not like any other day. Somebody just died. <laughs> He said, ah, I have been riding my bicycle all through. Oh, I know, I know. Oh, I know, I know. 
了，完了，完了，完了。Till this time it was about four o'clock, and I want to raise somebody. I say, hey, please, I beg you, don't don't make a mockery of your God. He say, no, 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 no. I want to wake him up because God has told me in the book. Then he opened the book and read it that, uh, uh, behold, I have given you power to tread upon serpents, to tread upon scorpions, and to raise the dead. And I said, listen, don't make a mockery of yourself. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead. I said, what? I'm not going to lie, John. Benson, you mean what you say that we can raise dead person? Yes, absolutely. Have you raised dead person before? Uh, no. Why? What you say I can do it? Yes. In the name of Jesus. Hey. He said, no, 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 come and show me where the baby was. So I said, okay. I took him to the room where the baby was lying. It, it was she. She was about uh, three years old, three or four, four years old then. And I said, "Listen, this baby died at about nine, and it's about four o'clock now. The baby is already changing color. The fact why why he why she was not being buried at this time is that the father has to go to the secretariat to get a death certificate." And he said, oh, there's no need for that now. Let's do it. Let's do it. I said, how? How are you going to do it? And he said, okay, go out if you don't want to see, see me do it. But, uh, you know, as a stubborn child, then I stood, at the, I stood at the door. I stood at the door with my back laid at the door. One, one eye on this side and one eye on the front door. And he prayed. Child. Be healed. I will bring to you an offering. After he prayed, he asked me, What is the name of the child? What is the girl's name? I said, It's Inuarata. I'm a living testimony. I give God the glory for keep counting me among the living today. I'm a testimony that the whole world know about through my father, late Ben Sinidahosa. I was sick about two weeks. After the sick, conversion hold me. So I, I, I die. When I die, they kept me inside one room. So my people was crying, weeping. About two hours, a bit three hours later, my father come, my late Benson the outside. He said, what is happening? He told him that her daughter, her daughter has lost. They said, what happened to her? He said, she was confused. So they tried the, in the ordinary native daughter tried, they can't raise her back to life. He said, where is her now? He said, she's swallowing there. He said, he asked my father the question. He said, daddy, do you believe that the God I serve can raise him come back to life. My father said yes. So he said they should take him to the room. Then take him to where yeah, they, they lie me down. So carry me, they were praying with some of members. As they pray, the God that answered by fire, hear their prayer. I come back to life. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! That is how I'm living so today. 
and he just stretched his Bible and himself on that child and said, Inuata, I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that has empowered me to raise the dead. Now, come back to life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Inuata, I command you, rise up! I was just peeping. And all of a sudden, the, the child that died at about 9 o'clock slays. Another day died to me after a year and three months in the womb. So, my mother passed through many tribulations before she gave back to me. Then he said, maybe I'm not a baby, I'm a wood, I'm this, but for God be thy glory. When they gave back to me, I'm, I'm a human being. And after they gave back to me, the devil, the useless man, raised up his ugly head to take my soul away. Did you know I took to my heels? I couldn't stand, I couldn't wait, and I ran out. <laughs> with him to the mother. He said, please give this child something to eat. And everybody was surprised. Everyone was shocked. Ah, and he just left. And when he left, I, I sat down and I was thinking, what is the thing that made this man to raise this child from the dead? There must be power superpower then i wasn't a child of god my mother used to serve um, she was a princess of olokun shango and all that and i said mm, the the power that raised this child from the dead must be a power that surpasses the power of these graven images that has no power so the father just came and we started celebrating, but he was gone. But in the night I sat and I, I started praying and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, just touch me. I have been hearing messages of salvation from here and there. Even the church I, 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 I used to go then, but I just knelt down and I said, Father, let Jesus come into my heart right now. And I need to know this power that raised this child. And that was all I prayed. I didn't know how to pray salvation prayer. But I just made and I said, Father, please, if you were the one that raised this child up, let come into my life and let me act and walk and believe like us. That young man that we call pastor believed, and he did this. And you know, when I finished prayers, there was an abundant joy, unspeakable joy in my spirit. And the following day, uh, we, we used to call him Brother Benson. He came and said, where is the child? You said the child is there. And I called him to the room and I said, you know what I did last night? I didn't know. Uh, I, I don't know how to do it, but I just knelt by my bedside and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, let me have a part of that power. I said, ah, you have done it. And I knelt down, he prayed, and I, and I said the, the sinner's prayer, and that was what got me into where I am now. And I'm glad. Okay, because I'm still alive, my father Benson Dalsa is still alive because I'm a living testimony. I'm glad that I, 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 I'm doing what I'm doing now because there was sign, there was wonder, there was, there, there was miracle that got into my heart. Thank God for today and my life. I have about eight children, two girls and two boys and six girls. He was a man that did everything by faith. I have about 10 grandchildren. 
to the glory of God. Now I understand the, the type of joy. The Bible said that the joy that no man can give, that is the joy that Jesus gives when you give your life to him. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now.
Thank you for taking the time to watch this powerful video of Archbishop Benson in Daosa. Archbishop Benson in Daosa was a charismatic Pentecostal preacher. He is the founder of Church of God Mission International. Archbishop Benson in Daosa was popularly referred to as the father of Pentecostalism in Nigeria. And I would like you to know that he was also my spiritual father please do not forget to share this video to bless all the people let this video go viral remain blessed hello this video is about Archbishop Bensi Idaosa his early Christian ministry testimony as a young Christian, I once heard my pastor say during a morning service that Christians could raise the dead in the name of the Lord Jesus. I believe it with my, all my heart. And flying around on my bicycle in those days, I went through the city of Benin in Nigeria in search of a dead person to raise to life. After five hours of hard session, I found a company where a little girl had died a few hours before. The corpse had been cleaned and prepared for burial. I walked boldly to the father of the child. The God whom I serve can bring your baby back to life. I told him, will you permit me to pray for the child and bring her back to life? The man was startled, but he agreed. I walked into the room and up to the bed. The child was cold and dead. With strong faith in the Lord, I called on the Lord to restore the child back to life. I turned to the corpse and called it by name. Arise in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to God. The corpse sneezed heavily. Alas, the child had come back to life. God is Bensi Indaosa. Now, Bensi Indaosa childhood. Bensi Indaosa was born in Benin City on September 11, 1938 to a pagan parents. He was a sickly infant who was always fainting. As a result of his constant illness, his father ordered the mother to throw him in the dustbin. When he was 18, year, 18 months old, he was left on a rubbish heap to die. He was rejected by his father, sent to work on a farm as a servant, and was denied education until he was 14 years old. His education was irregular due to the poor financial status of his parents. He later took correspondence course from Britain and United States while working in Bata Shoe Company. His conversion and call to ministry. His conversion was drastic and his calling supernatural. He was converted by Pastor Akpos on a football field on one Sunday afternoon while playing soccer with his teammates. Thus, young Benson, young Benson became the first Benin member of Pastor Akbar's small congregation. As a young convert, he became very zealous in winning souls and in conducting outreaches in villages around Benin City. He was called to the ministry in a night vision from the Lord. I have called you that you might take the gospel around the world in my name, preach the gospel, and I will confirm my words with signs following said the voice from heaven the room was filled with the presence of god as benson fell to his knees before the lord wherever you want me to go i will go he prayed through the night renewing his vows to god and interceding for his people who were yet to hear the message of salvation after his call benson launched into ministry work preaching from village to village the gospel of, the, of, of Jesus Christ with great power and anointing. More people confess Christ as their Savior and more healings occur as he prayed for the sick. Expansion of his ministry and his credentials. Archbishop Benson Daosa, the Archbishop himself and the founder of Church of God Mission International Incorporated with his headquarters in Benin City, Nigeria, established over 6,000 churches throughout Nigeria, Ghana before 90, 
1971. Many of the ministers he supervised pastored churches of 1,000 to 4,000 people. In addition to filling the position of Archbishop of Church of God Mission, he also he, he was also president of All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, president of Idaosa World Outreach, and president of Faith Medical Center. He had positions in numerous organizations, including the College of, Bish of Bishop of the International Communion of Christian Churches and the Ora Robert uh, University in Oklahoma. It also earned a diploma in divinity from Christ for the Nation Institute in Dallas, Texas, which he attended in 1971, a doctorate of divinity in 1981, from the World Faith College, New Orleans, and a Doctor of Law degree from Ora Robert University in March 1984. He also received another degree, he also received other degrees from the International University in Brussels, Belgium. Archbishop Benson and his wife, Margaret Idaosa, were blessed with four children. Idaosa Supreme Tax. So winning was in Daosa primary consign with a motto evangelism our supreme tax. He worked towards his goal of reaching the origin Nigeria, Africa and the rest of the world with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. As a black African, he found the doors of African countries were wide open and he ministered in over 133 countries all 123 countries all over the world. Crusade played a major role in his ministry. He was involved at least one crusade per month. A record crowd of nearly one million people a night attended his Lagos crusade in April 1985. He established the Redemption Television Ministry with a potential viewing audience of 15 million people. What leading gospel minister said about Archbishop Idaosa. According to Mrs. Gordon Frada Lisser, President of Christ for the Nation Incorporated, Dallas, Texas, USA, I know of no young black in all Africa who is preaching, who is reaching millions as Benson is in crusade with hundreds of thousands in attendance in, in, a, in his weekly nationwide telecast in his Bible school, training eager student from several nations. He also conducted campaigns in Sweden, Singapore, Malaysia, Korea, Australia, and United States, where he often appeared on national religious telecast. His burden for souls, his ministry of healing and miracles, even to the raising of several dead, demonstrates is a, a demonstrate he is especially called of the Lord in this end time. Dr. Ben Akosa remarked, Benson Daosa is sought after by everyone in the state, from government officials to beggars. When they pose questions and explain their problem to this man, they receive instantaneous miracle solution, just as the people did in Bible days with God's prophet. The people got miraculous answer from his, from this mighty leader of God's people, said Daniel Oris. Benin City respect and salute this great man of God even at his death. I have been with him on visit to many officials, to the governor, to the powerful Benin tribal kings. He moved with God and his people knows it. His great miracle cathedral, his headquarters, sit over 10,000 in 1981. His Bible school attract upper class people from different African nations and also come from Maurice, India, uh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, Singapore, Philippines, Hong Kong, Japan, Korea, the Middle East, Europe, and other nations of the world. A truly international Bible training center of dynamic faith. People know that Bishop Idaosa preached what he practiced. Dr. Idaosa's evangelistic ministry has reached nations around the world. 
He was the first Af black African evangelist to shake Australia in a massive crusade that got national attention. His seminars have affected Christians and church leaders in many countries. I sincerely salute this man because he practiced among his own people what he preached to the world. Bensi Indaosa was a man who believed God's promises and that God's miracle provision applies to Africans as well as to Americans. He believed that African has a part in God's work and African will reap God's blessing. Evangelist T. S. Bond from Tulsa, Oklahoma remarked, Many who followed Idaosa's teaching have been saved from poverty and have learned to plant out of their have learned how to plant out of their desperate need and to look to God as their divine source, thereby becoming prosperous Christians in their own land. Idaosa rose from the rank of an ordinary man to a world leader's leadership as a pastor, a builder, a counselor, a prophet, a teacher, uh, an apostle, an evangelist, a man of godly wisdom and of Christ-like compassion whose ministry has blessed million, millions the world over. Idaosa was the greatest African ambassador of the apostolic Christian faith to the world. The secret of his success. Idaosa operated in faith. He had a robust faith. He believed and trusted God with a childlike faith. He once said that living a daily life of absolute faith in God is the only secret to great success. He believed God for everything. All things are possible to him that believes. He spent quality times in prayer and in the study of God's word. He said that if someone spent time studying the Bible and acting on it, people will come looking for that person for life solutions. He also, also spent time studying the works and the lives of other successful people, both in the gospel ministry and other faith of human endeavors, and he applied the principles he learned, he learned from these successful people to his life and ministry. He was very energetic, hardworking. One of the ministers who served under him said that he had never seen a man who worked as hard as Archbishop Benson Dawsa. He was committed and consistent, and he had confidence in himself he was very humble and full of godly wisdom how bishop bensi idaosa was said to be the leader of over seven million jesus people worldwide before he went to be with the lord in february 1998. now i'm going to talk about his early ministry again as a youth, he got converted to Christianity by a certain pastor at Paul and joined the flagging congregation as one of the first members. He was very active and converted many to Christianity. After experiencing a revelation from God, calling him into ministry, he began to conduct outreaches from village to village before establishing his church in a store in Benin City. Archbishop Benson Idaosa was well known for many notable quotable quotes, including, My God is not a poor God. Your attitude determines your, your attitude determines your attitude. It is more risky not to take risk. I am a possibilitarian. A big head without a big brain is a big load to the neck. If your faith says yes, God cannot say no. Among others, many of these messages on faith, miracle, and prosperity remain a classic among Pentecostal. He had strong links with international gospel ministers like Billy Graham, T.L.S. Bond, Kenneth Hagin, Penny Inn, Ryan Bonke, Maurice Cerullo, Ora Robert, amongst others, and took the gospel to 145 nations in his lifetime. At the time of his death in 1998, he had preached to more white than any black man and to more black than any white man. 
His desire to meet the need of the total man led him to establish several other arms of the ministry apart from the church. They include faith, Metaplex, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, Word of Faith, Group of School, Bensi Indaosa University, which is currently under leadership of a son, Reverend E. F. B. Uh, Idaosa, his wife, Margaret uh, Idaosa, is the current Archbishop of the Church. It was used by God to perform many miracles, including healing the blinds, raising up 28 people from the dead at different times in his ministry. You must understand this powerful man of God that God used to affect the nation of the world. And I'm glad and privileged that he was my father in the Lord. I am honored to be a part of his anointing, a part of his, of his ministry. I want to ask you, please make sure you share these videos, this video, this particular video to bless all the people and make sure you have enough time to visit Anointed Tube, support Anointed Tube and let people all over the world around you, your village, your town, your city, your colleagues, your family, your friends, all your contact get to know about Anointed Tube. So thank you for taking the time to listen to this or, or watch this video. I believe that um, your life can never remain the same because God's servant was such a powerful, powerful, humble, great man of God that God used before he was called to be with him. I, and I'll say it again, I am grateful and I'm privileged to be a son to Archbishop Bensi in the house. The Lord bless you.